Hi, my name is Janiah Myers, and this is the Ecological Foundations of Kamiak Butte. Our lands were formed from the movement and distribution of the plate tectonics that make up our Earth. The beginnings of Kamiak Butte starts about 70 million years ago, when the North American continent had its entire Pacific Northwest side submerged underwater. 20 million years later, the eastern side of Washington had risen from the push of the Juan de Fuca Plate east, which forced the continental plate upwards. The force ultimately created what we know now as Eastern Washington, turning places like Pullman into a beachfront. The quartzite rocks discovered all over Kamiak Butte were once sand and is now something that makes up the main part of the Butte geology today. As we know, the Ice Age was about 2.6 million years ago, and as the global temperature began to drop, glacial ice began to form all across the Earth. A million years later, the glaciation seeped in from the north and covered all of Washington state with glaciers. About 11,000 glaciers moved years across ago, land to the ice sheet formed by the glaciers began to break apart because the global temperature began to warm. These glaciers moved across the landscape for about 2.5 million years. At first, it was just snow and surface level ice melting, but then the glaciers began to melt as well. When the snow melted, water started running, creating super aggressive as it passed rivers. the Grand Coulee, this process made its way down the south. Columbia River and collided with another glacial structure. As it passed the Grand Coulee, it was forced further south. The water continued its way, searching for some point of drainage, creating hundreds of river channels and reshaping the landscape as it did so. This has happened multiple times after, which has carved and shaped what we call the flood basalts of the Pacific Northwest. As the floods carried and moved things around, the fertile lowest soils that had been accumulating for two million years were washed away from areas like Sprague Lake. The water backed up about 1,200 feet in a gap before it finally subsided. Water made its way down the Columbia River and formed Lake Lewis from the restricting water flow. Marine polar air systems blow up the Columbia River Gorge. This is a system that passed through the Willow Gap, blowing debris of dust, dry silt, and sud. The strong winds blew across the Palouse, picking up patterns of silt that were forced into fine powder by the glaciers. When the silt settled, it created layers of the dome-like hills of the Palouse. These soil layers can still be found today. They are what we call lowest soils. Lowest soils are where most of the world's best agricultural lands are formed. As we move forward in the timeline, the Palouse was covered in a beautiful scenery of its prairie. As colonization happened and settlers came to this land, they discovered the richness of the soil underneath the prairie scenery. They did not hesitate to take advantage of the soil and begin removal of pieces of the original prairie to make room for what they saw as more beneficial wheat. They later figured out how unsuccessful the growth of wheat was on Kamiak Butte. The ancient sedimentary quartz in the low soils of the Kamiak Butte did not hold water as well. It struggled to keep water levels in its soil high enough for the shallow rooted plants to reach. To this day, Kamiak Butte remains with the native pieces of prairie that are not completely surrounded by farmland wheat. Kamiak Butte is located in an area of what ecologists call the rain shadow. In Washington state, the eastern side has more of a drier climate, whereas the western side has more of a temperate climate. The climatic condition of Washington state is a perfect example of the rain shadow and its effect on a region. The west side of Washington is located near the Pacific Ocean. This means that they get more cloud formations and cooler air. As the air and clouds travel over the mountains, it warms and adapts to the climate of drier conditions. Specifically in Kamiak Butte, on its south facing aspects, winds carry heat from the direct solar radiation. This is one of the main causes of the huge differences we see in plants on the south facing aspect versus the north facing aspect. Heat from the solar radiation causes the plants to close their somata to prevent water loss. This process also causes them to reduce photosynthesis. Shrubs and grasses dominate the south facing aspect more because the climatic conditions are not fit for the conifer trees on those sites.
With continentality, we measure the influence a landmass can have on climate. If we look at coastal areas, we can see that they have a strong reflection of the oceanic influences with climate. With that, the inner region of the continent is not as affected by the oceanic climatic influences. This typically describes exactly why some may say that the continentality is a reflection of how an area is affected by the oceanic climatic influences. The higher the temperatures means that the heat waves are expected to happen more often and last longer. Warmer temperatures can also lead to changes around the world. Increasing the air temperature can affect oceans, weather, snow, and ice, and the plants and animals on Earth. This is because of the de Niro wind systems that we can explain the blatant difference of the western side of Washington and the eastern side of Washington. Specifically, the way temperature regimens differ between coastal and interior areas of a continent. The oceans have a bigger heat capacity than land bodies. Rapid temperature change is what causes the inner regions of a continent to have greater temperatures than coastal regions. Looking at the topography of the region helps determine the amount of solar radiation an area receives. It consists of the form, structure, and relief of land surfaces. It is a whole configuration of the Earth's surface. With climate and weather, climatic conditions typically become colder as the altitude increases. The angle of land can change the angle of solar radiation reaching the surface. On Kamiak Butte, the winds in the south aspect carries heat from the direct solar radiation, affecting the water vapor loss in plants. This has an impact on the plant's process to do photosynthesis and how it intakes carbon dioxide. We can see who's the better competitor on Kamiak Butte with these conditions. The grasses and steppe vegetation are shown to be the more dominant accustomed species than the conifer trees on these sites. On the north-facing aspect of the butte, plants tend to be more protected from the full force wind, so vegetation like trees and vascular shrubs like ferns are able to be seen more. Kamiak Butte's biome. The plant in this biome shows a perfect example of plant resilience. You can find a lot of evolutionary convergence between the plants and animals here. Different species of animals have developed similar characteristics of survival to adapt to this unique environment. As we know, the Palouse Prairie is underlain by windblown sediments that were deposited from the glacial lake Missoula floods. The prairie of the Palouse, because of agriculture, is considered one of the most endangered ecosystems in the U.S. Knowing the land history, you will see the lowest soil profile that blew from the Columbia River Gorge on the marine polar air mass. You will definitely notice the agriculture and many crops that responded to these soil types. Potatoes, sweet corn, grapes, and blueberries are some of the most popular ones. If you move further up north, the soil deposits are heavier, which ultimately created the Whitman County, the most productive wheat-producing lands of the world. Because of agriculture, this biome is considered to be an anthropogenic landscape or human landscape. Over time, herbicides, agricultural fertilizers, and practices that came to be from the human impact of what is considered favorable or undesirable made a way of shaping this land's biome in a new way. The neighboring canyon lands of Snake and Clearwater Rivers had more shallow soils, steeper topography, and drier climate that is in fact not suitable for crop production or much agriculture at all. The neighboring lands were then used for much longer periods of grazing for domestic animals. Grazing periods resulted in irreversible changes to the native grasses. The reason we have adopted no-till farming practices in the Palouse region that helped a lot with the negative impacts of agriculture on the region. When arriving to Kamiak Butte, you will notice many things, that being of the beautiful ponderosa pine, Douglas fir, and western larch trees you'll see. With that, you may also find many of the shrubs and grasses that live abundantly all across the butte. Looking at Kamiak Butte, you notice a blatant difference in the habitats of the north and south facing aspects. The north facing aspect has a lot more native vegetation and trees, whereas the south facing aspect has more shrubs and grasses. The interactions between each one's ecosystem shows how the interactions between living organisms ensures abundance as a team effort. How the interconnections are important. Biodiversity is one of the prominent elements for life on Earth our ecological life support. Because of it, we are able to have ecosystems that supply things like the oxygen we breathe and the fresh water we drink. Biodiversity helps set the foundations of necessities needed by all organisms on Earth. Help us not only establish an abundant life, but a balance that keeps the abundance going. 
We can see this effect with nutrient cycling and many other resources. Interaction between animals such as trophic levels help to restore and ensure balance of things within these cycles, which in all prevents things like pollution and overuse of our resources. Nitrogen is one of the most abundant elements in our atmosphere. The amount of nitrogen we have determines the abundance of a lot of our resources. The balance the nitrogen cycle brings us, researchers have estimated we will lose up to one third of the crops we rely on for food. Too much of it can cause pollution to our waterways or harm to our aquatic life. When plants lack nitrogen, they are unable to produce the amino acids needed to make up their living cells of muscles and tissue. However, with the carbon cycle, we see that carbon is prominent of our lives in a way it is both key to life as well as the path to our destruction. We use carbon for the basics of the foundation on this earth, but also rely heavily on it for the human civilization sources of energy. To the nitrogen cycle, the carbon cycle consists of its travel to and from the atmosphere of the earth. And it is a closed system, so the amount of carbon doesn't change. However, most of our carbon is stored away in rocks, and the rest is in the ocean, atmosphere, and living organisms. These can be considered reservoirs, or sinks, throughout the carbon cycles. That effects on the lives of the natural world through things like the climate crisis and the loss of resources. This has threatened the biodiversity on Earth, which has been the key to our survival from the beginning of time. We can find a lot of our energy sources coming from the original point of the sun. Solar energy is vital to all organisms. This is one of the main reasons energy flow remains extremely important. Energy transfer is what makes this all possible. Plants are one of the first of many organisms that can convert solar energy into use for energy for themselves and others. When animals like herbivores eat plants, they are transferred the converted energy and can then use it to their benefit. This process trickles up the food chain, which ultimately is how energy sources spread throughout an ecosystem. This is one of the main reasons the Earth's organisms are dependent on one another for survival. As we see in the differences in the Kamiak Butte region, we can also see the connections of the land and how the environment influences the differences in the aspects. Some may see the south-facing aspect as useless or not as important because it does not provide a lot compared to the north-facing aspect. However, if you compare the differences, the south-facing aspect adds an aspect of balance needed for this ecosystem to survive. Without the harsh factors included in the south-facing aspect, the ecosystem would lack population checks on the organisms living there. These checks ensure that resources are able to remain as abundant as possible for all without selfish behaviors such as overgrazing. Often, these interactions of land and environmental influences are overlooked and not seen as something of importance for key to our survival. However, these interconnections and examples of how organisms interact within an environment is the key to the life on this here earth we all call home.